for the goals they choose to pursue. I thought they were good jobs every time. Monty Cook is a heck of a writer, uh, and he's prominently featured in a lot of that work. I am not personally familiar with who did fourth. It's probably a team approach. Now, I mentioned earlier, I kind of insisted and was spurred by Gary on a one-man show as far as the D&D box sets. I was going to do the same thing with the AD&D rules. During that time, in the 80s, we moved into more of design by committee sort of thing. Everybody taking a little piece of the pie for various reasons. Uh, personal glorification, stability of production, uh, guarantees to hit time frames. There are a lot of good valid business reasons for doing it this way. That's just generally not how I work. Although I have done collaborations with others, it's not a group design approach. That said, and granting the need to sell more miniatures and rules for using them, I must, as a gamer, admit that using being so heavily dependent on miniatures as 3, 3, 5, and 4 are certainly adds a lot of clarity to the situation and addresses the lack of visualization ability on the part of some gamers. So there are definitely points in favor of having the miniatures, the precise rules for combats, positioning, facing, etc., etc. I personally have no problem and no preference either way when it comes to the new character classes, the hybrid races, the breaking out of class archetypes and into skills and so on and so forth. These, are, these all can be good things. If it slows down the game and you spend more time looking up rules or dwelling on rules or arguing about rules than you do in the role playing and having fun, like I say, I think that's antithetical to my personal approach at it. But one cannot argue to with, with any great realism that this is not a viable financial approach. It certainly has been for them. Since my roots go back to the original little brown box OD&D set, um, which typified a whole new approach of, well, make it up as you go along. And I concurred with Gary's assessment of, why are these folks calling us to answer their questions? They should just make, some, make something up. We are not gods. We do not lay down the rules from on high. These are guidelines on how to have fun by this mode of entertainment. And I subscribed to that and conveyed it in the D&D rules I wrote, the five box sets, are very loose guidelines. One thing that Wizards of the Coast did, and TSR started it, and frankly, with AD&D 2nd Edition and then with their later revisions of the D&D line, and then merging those, one course they chose to pursue was the goal of providing rules for as much as possible, and as rules, not as objectives. Or, or guidelines. Thus I have a fundamental psychological and, and philosophical disagreement with that approach in game design. I prefer to leave it more open-ended. Maybe it's due to a misguided trust in your local gamers DM, and DMs to be able to make up things. But I know that when you write rules for everything you cultivate a climate of well we need these rule books, we need these rule book supplements sometimes called splat books. Uh, we need more rules about this and that. We need more rules. You create the addiction and then you feed it. If you break out of that mindset, which is tough to do, and search for a game that has less rules and more freedoms accordingly, less expenditure to buy everything with all the rules, then you're looking at a whole different game system. And there are several out there, one of which is Castle and Crusades from the Troll Lords. Uh, they don't attempt to chase down every rule, lay down every rule for every situation. Whereas there are certainly marketing advantages and sales advantages and revenues to be had by cultivating this mindset amongst the gamers. Uh, that you need these rules, you depend on these rules, and the more rules the better. It's different philosophies. From a personal point of view, 3, 3.5, 4th edition are not to my taste. In the scope though of Hasbro as a mega corporation, frankly, and the tiny little amount of revenue that the entire hobby gaming field generates for them through Wizards of the Coast. I don't know that D&D &D will continue in this way for that much longer, simply because it does not produce the return on investment 
that other Hasbro investments, both in terms of corporate divisions and individual product lines, bring to the shareholders, which are a majority, major concern for any major corporation like that, a public one, you got to consider your shareholders and their returns. So it's all these business decisions, you don't have gamers like Gary and Brian in the old days making the calls based on what the gamers want. 